All right, so I'm going to try to make this a little more concise because I've been, this is like the fourth or fifth time I've recorded this, but uh, it's just like they keep coming, they keep turning rambly and, and whatever. And for those of you who know this channel, obviously, that's kind of, that's a bad sign because um, most of my videos are already rambly. Um, but the point being, uh, I wanted to talk about, I don't know if I should break this up into two videos, but um, I wanted to talk about just the balancing, the whole issues with balancing and the issues with um, both like the idea of nerfs and the idea of power creep. Um, I wanted to talk about like my experience with gaming and like let people know that like I do have a lot of experience with gaming and, and in terms of like both not, not, not just gotchas like Epic 7 but also other games that have Epic 7 like qualities and the same problems that Epic 7 has. So I guess before I get into it like really talking about power creep and all that stuff and all that stuff um I've been playing like you know basically every every common shooter that there is to play out there Call of Duty, Halo, Gears, you know, Battlefield, all that stuff. I've played all that stuff, uh, like fighting games, all, a lot of the major fighting games, like all the you know, Smash games, um, Marvel, you know, and, and not just like casually, competitive, competitively. I've played a lot of these games competitively. Uh, Marvel, Smash, uh, you know, Soul Calibur, Blaze Blue, uh, even you know. Well, I haven't played. Uh, Guilty Gear competitively, but I played it a little bit. But anyway, the point being that I like you know even even take example like MOBAs and stuff like that, all those games. I've played a lot of games where balance is an issue. Balance is something that's like problematic in them. Um, and I'm not saying that a lot of the YouTubers out there like haven't played them or aren't that experienced. Uh, I don't want to make any assumptions based on that. But the way they're acting, the way they're addressing these topics, they're acting almost like they've never seen this kind of stuff before. They're acting like. Epic 7 is the only game that needs balancing when games have been needing to be balanced for the past 20 years, right? And nothing's going to fix that. Like, last year they were complaining, the year before that they were complaining, the year before that they were complaining, and you know what? This year they're going to complain some more. And next year they're going to complain some more. And the year after that they're going to complain some more. And even if they did, even if Epic 7 and Smilegate did every single thing that everyone's complaining about right now, if they did all that they wanted, next year they're still going to complain. And the year after that they're still going to complain, right? So my point necess isn't necessarily before I even start talking about the idea of uh, power creep and and like all the balance stuff. I want to lay a baseline of people need to start looking at this from a more mature head, a more experienced, a more wise kind of viewpoint. Because right now they all just sound like children who've like never played a game before and don't know how balancing works. Like how how yeah they've never played. Let's say it, it feels like they've never played anything where balancing is an issue. Um, like I said, I don't mean to assume that they have or not. I don't know. I don't know what anyone else's gaming experience is. I only know I've been playing games for the past 20 years, and I've been dealing with this for the past 20 years. Um, that's not to say that they're wrong. I'm not here to say that, like, okay, so let's take one issue by itself. The issue of power creep. Some people say it's bad. Some people say it, or some people don't say anything at all, right? Some people say it's bad. Are they correct or are they incorrect? Not, necess not necessarily either, right? They're both. Of, they're both. They're correct and incorrect. I'm not here to give you one definitive answer. I'm just here to let you know that dying on this hill of, oh, power creep is bad or we need to fix power creep is worthless. It doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't mean anything. It's 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 a waste of time for everyone. Um, and it also makes you look like a fool. Like you've never, like again, it makes you look like you've never played another game before. And that's, that's good. That's fine because they don't like, the thing about YouTube is you make an echo chamber, right? You get your subscribers, you get your fans who, again, a lot of them are younger people who play Epic 7. They just only play Epic 7. They've never played a bunch of other games. They've never seen these things. So spewing this stuff out to like people who aren't like knowledgeable in these things just makes an echo chamber of them repeating what you just said or like you validating their opinions. And that's it. That's all it does, right? Um, it doesn't actually make a dialogue. And nobody's having a dialogue about what's you know wrong with Power Creep or why it should or shouldn't be there. They're all just like echo chambering each other and just saying it's bad and we got to fix this um, without really thinking about it, without really understanding about it. Because again, they all just want, you know, they all have an audience and the audience, they don't have a discourse with the audience very much. They just like, <laughs> the audience is there to kneel before them is basically the point I'm trying to make. It's just, they'll agree with whatever the YouTuber says. And if they don't agree, then they won't subscribe and they won't watch the videos, right? So that's, that's basically the bottom line. Um... So the point is that like on the YouTube community, not just like not just Epic Seven stuff, just anything on YouTube in general, they're they're not be like people aren't beholden to their peers. No one has dialogue. People who make YouTube videos don't watch other people's YouTube videos. They don't really care. Like 
Are they going to go out and see, like, oh, what's this guy's view on this? What's this other guy's view on this? They don't really care. They have their own view that they made up, and they're right, and, you know, there you go. I mean, there's a word for that. It's called uh, narcissism. It's called myopia, and it's often it's often associated with solipsism. Again, those are just a bunch of fancy words that don't mean anything, and if you want to look them up, you'll you'll understand what they mean to some degree, but... Having this sort of closed off, like this myopic, like self-centered idea that like my opinion on this is right and I can't change it is is problematic. And this is, again, this is even before I start talking about whether or not um, power creep is good, whether it's, it should be there or not, or before I even start talking about balance problems, you can already see kind of where all these arguments are like, why they're so problematic, right? Before I even mention whether or not we should have power creep or anything like that. You can kind of see why there's problems. And if you can't see why there's problems, then, you know, maybe you're not old enough to, like, understand, you know, certain, you know, ethical and, and philosophical, like, uh, interpretations or, like, why something could be wrong or whatnot. But, uh, yeah, so before I even get on to that, like, just it, it's important for people to realize that, like, what I want with this video isn't necessarily to say one side is right and one side is wrong. The most important thing I want for this video is, is for one, the, the, the creation of discourse as well as the understanding of like getting people, basically just getting people's understanding higher, having them have a little bit of self-awareness. Again, no one's gonna watch this video because I've only got like 30 subscribers, but like whatever. Um, it's the principle that counts, it's the principle, right? Um, the idea is that we need to have more educated discussions about these things because if not, then we just look like idiots, right? Like that's all, that's, that's the bottom line, right? Like. Nobody, yeah, everyone's just, again, myopically spewing their own opinion and not changing it or not being open to, like, understanding why it could be wrong, right? Everyone's just kind of, like, you can't argue with them because nobody wants to argue because they're right. They already know they're right. The reason they have a YouTube channel is because they know they're right, and the reason they're making videos is because they just want to spread the right opinion, which is not true, right? Um, everything is, there's two sides to everything. So the reason the purpose i want to make with this video is like just kind of mature the conversation a little bit like add something to it and have if anyone if anyone bigger than me watches this video hopefully you can take away something in terms of like stopping and like really giving yourself some sort of self-awareness and like retro and you know self perspective on yourself right is the main thing i just want to add more perspective to this conversation because right now like i said it's just a bunch of myopic echo chambers running around um complaining about something and making a big deal out of it because, you know, making a big deal out of something and making it, like, the enemy is a good way to get more views, good way to get more money, a good way to get more attention, right? So, again, this is even before talking about the two topics I'm here to talk about. Before talking about them, you can already see where the problems come in and why they're, like, why there's problems, right? Uh, so now we get into it, right? When we're talking about power creep, and for those of you who don't, you know, obviously... I haven't played Fire Emblem for a long time, but when I used to play Fire Emblem, there was a YouTuber, his name was Acarus, which um, hopefully if I find the video, I'll link it at the bottom, but I don't really feel like looking for it because it came out like two or three years ago or something like that, and it's going to take forever to find, and I really don't care enough. Uh, unless it's like easy to find, I just search up Acarus, like Power Creep, and then see that video. But anyway, he made a video talking about Power Creep, and while he was talking about Fire Emblem, um, and the games are considerably different, I would say... Not considerably, but they're decently different, but they're also basically similar in terms of like gotchas, unit power, power creep, and how it affects the game and all that stuff. Um, what's important to realize is that power creep isn't necessarily a bad thing on its own, right? Power creep is a bad thing when the power creep is too much, when it's not even power creep anymore, because the idea of power creep means that it's slowly inching stronger, right? The, 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 power, the line of power slowly inches higher. That, necessar that isn't necessarily a bad thing. That's fine. That's just how games work. You kind of have to just keep getting, you know, better stuff as time goes on, uh, especially in a gacha game, which needs to make money, right? So you got to constantly try to, like, find ways to, like, eke out people's, like, money or, or their sky stones or their resources. You got to find constant ways to, like, Get them to let that stuff go because if they don't, then your economy gets kind of like you're not making money off your game. So power creep in and of itself is not a bad thing because not only does it make it so that you're constant like because if power creep wasn't a thing, and let's say something like SSB or Alencia was as strong today as they were when they first came out, why would you be like you would have a stockpile of molas because you wouldn't need to upgrade new units, right? You would just sit on those two units, right? Not I mean not those two specifically, but you don't understand what I'm saying. If the season one units were all as strong today as they were back then then you're just going to sit there on those units, right, and make them, like, 
you're not gonna have to invest in new units. You don't have to pull for new units. You don't have to invest new resources. You're just gonna have a huge stockpile of MOLA and bookmarks for no reason because you don't have to pull for new units. Now, a lot of people are gonna pull for them because they like them regardless, right? Um, but the point being that um, power creep helps let people let their resources go, right? Power creep becomes bad when it's more like a power rush or something like that, right? When the free-to-play player can no longer keep up with the power curve. And right now, the free-to-play player can keep up with the power curve. I know that because I've been free-to-play for a while. Again, I'm not 100% free-to-play, so if you want to take that as a point against me, then I understand that. I, I don't argue the point of, like... If you want to say absolutely, I can't count myself as, like, a free-to-play player because I don't because I have spent some money, then I then I completely understand that, and I argue, and I agree with that. Um, but take someone like Astronox, who has, like, six free-to-play accounts. He has six free-to-play accounts, and he likes making this different accounts and starting over again because of Power Creep lets him start a new account, you know, every year and catch up to where the other ones are, right? And he can compete to some degree, and that's kind of why he does it, to show people that this game is still good to free-to-play players, right? It's still possible to jump in this late and still have a decent chance of fighting everyone else. And that's what Power Creep allows you to do. It allows you to, like, jump into the game at any point and have knowledge that the units that are about to come out in the future are going to be strong enough, if not stronger, than the units that already came out so that all the whales who've been sitting on all their stuff and all the people who have a lot of time in this game are just sitting around overpowering all the weaker people, right? Like something like, take, um, what's it called? Something like EVE Online, right, as a good example. Like, you jump into EVE Online, you're not going to have a corporation, right? You're going to be just some grunt, right? People who have been playing EVE Online since the beginning of, like, the game have their own little, like, they're high, they're like a general and whatever, or they're doing, you know, they're high up in what they're doing, and it makes it harder for people to penetrate those spaces. Again, is it impenetrable? No, absolutely not. There's still, you know, you can still go in that game and do whatever, right? I don't play EVE Online that much, but the point being is I know the, the power structure is there. Epic 7 kind of tries to avoid letting, like, this guy win just because he's been around long enough to have all the broken units since the beginning of time. That's what Power Creep allows you to do, is it allows you to see new units coming out and be strong enough to compete with older units and outclass them by some degree. And it makes whales, like, constantly be spending money because if they want to, you know, if they find it so worthwhile to be in Legend, they're going to have to just keep dumping resources uh, to stay in Legend. Right? So Power Creep, again... Power creep is not inherently a bad thing. Power creep can be a bad thing, but it's is it like if power creep is such a bad thing, just stop playing the game. That's the bottom line, right? Um, that day will come where the power creep gets so bad that you'll just stop playing the game, right? Like there's no reason to stress out about it. Like either you enjoy the game now and you play it, or you don't enjoy the game now and go do something else, right? Like don't play something you don't enjoy is the bottom line to the whole the whole system. Um, and if power creep is too much for you and you can't keep up with it, then just leave. But again, we go back before we start talking about power creep or now we've mentioned power creep. We're going to go back to the stuff I was talking about at the beginning. Why are people so against power creep? Um, and why are people so like, I guess attached, right? It's because a lot of the YouTubers who are making videos about this stuff spend like inordinate amounts of money on this game and they don't want to lose that money by having to leave the game it makes it harder to leave the game when you've spent thousands of dollars into it right like if the game you know they want to moderate the power creep so it doesn't get to to the point where it's too bad but it's kind of impossible because the power like i said the power creep needs to be there because if it's not there we're not going to get an influx of new players and the game's just going to die we are going to get an influx of new players but they're just going to leave immediately because they can't compete with the people who have all the best units already right but second of all, that's first of all. Second of all, um, like I said, if you can't get rid of power creep 100%, you want to mitigate it. But it's kind of hard to mitigate it, right? You have to find a good balance of it. And I don't really, I don't know. Like it's hard to realize. It's hard to really sit here and tell you that power creep is so bad that you can't compete because ever since the game came out, like the game gives you a lot of resources when you first start, so that you can like effectively just pull every unit. Like I remember when I first started this game, I had so many resources that I could like. Um, pull two of every new unit that came out, right? Maybe not, not like, well, I had like, you know, and the point being that I could at least get one of every unit, every pity every one of every unit, right? And I'm still at the point where I can still pity every one of every unit, right? And that's, you know, right now I have limited resources because I have, you know, because all you get is from Arena, right? Arena is the only place you get um, Skystone. Um, but the point being that like RGB power, um, power growth is not 
bad, right? Because everyone can get every new unit that's coming out. And if, if you can't get it, then you need to reevaluate where your resources are being spent and what's going on with your stuff, right? So that's that's one angle. So power creep in the RGB space is not bad, right? Hua Yung coming out and dumpstering like everyone's ML five stars is a good thing because everyone has access to Hua Yung, right? You might say, oh, it's bad because of this, that. No, it, it's absolutely a good thing because if everyone has access to it, that means it's like universally available. It means we can all use it. We all have to play around it and play with it. Um, the problem, of course, comes with uh, Moonlight characters as well as Mystic characters because Super Whales obviously have all of the five stars. They have everything. They, they can buy all the Mystic packs and get all the five stars that they want. Um, but free-to-play players are on this system where it's like we all have a lim limited amount of um, ML-based resources. So we can kind of like... We'll get one every so often, but the thing is that it makes it like okay for us to miss some because we know that the next one is going to be stronger, if not as strong as the one that just came out, right? And like, yeah, it's not so bad to phase out certain units, right? Not to mention like, again, all most of the ML five stars aren't really that weak. I mean, some of them are kind of weird and they don't make a whole lot of sense, but as long as you have like an ML five star, oh, well, I can, nah, that's fine, whatever. As long as you have an ML five star, right? You're basically solid because none of these are really that bad. I mean, well, we can go ahead and talk about which are the worst ones, but um, you're not going to be like, I mean, I guess unless this is the only, if your only one is Saramintha, then I guess I'm sorry, but like, <laughs> that kind of sucks. I mean, he's pretty decent for new players. But anyway, um, the point I'm trying to make is that like power creep, again, makes it so that missing one isn't so bad in between. So the whales are covered because they get all of them and the free to play players are covered because they don't have to like they don't have to get all of them i can get the next one and still compete right it's okay the people again the people who are most stressed out about this and the people who complain about this the most are the mid tiers not not necessarily the mid tiers but the higher mid tiers like lower end whales the kind of people who barely slip into legend like they want to be in legend and they want to compete but they don't want to spend real legend money they want to but they don't want to spend like you know they don't want to spend nothing right they want to spend a bunch of money but not you know not real legend money and they get kind of like mad because they don't have enough money to keep up with all the new five star MLs, and then someone else has it, and they have to deal with it, right? Um, so keep that in mind. Is like keep in mind who is complaining about these things, who is complaining about what's going on, like how the game works. And it's again, it's the people who just can't afford all of them, uh, but they want to afford all of them. They wish they could spend that kind of money, and they are spending a huge amount of money. Um, yeah. The other thing is, like, again, it goes back to the same thing of, like, it's hard to let this game go and it's hard to, like, look at this game objectively when you've invested so many resources into it, right? Like, again, lower tier whales, like, they want the, they want to be a legend because they want to feel like they're a legend player, right? But, like, is that making you happy? Like, to me, personally, I think you should just pick one or the other, be free to play or be a whale, right? Because if you're a whale, because unless you're going to go full whale, like be absolute whale, and then you have all the mystic packs bought out all the time, you have all the mystic summons, everything. Unless you have all that on lockdown, there's really no point in being a whale because you're going to get outpaced by the ones who are actually being a whale. And you're just going to be miserable. Like, it's miserable trying to, like, fight your way into legend to compete with people who have tons more money than you when most free-to-play players are in... Um, are in champion or though you know sometimes you make it up to that lobster one or like the crab emperor crab whatever you make it into that rank and that's fine because you're also playing against other people who are at the same level of investment as you are and it's a more even fight right so anyway that's that's the main point uh, but like i said is power creep necessarily wrong no because it gives new players an avenue to compete with people who have been playing this game for a long time because again if the only people who, if the only units that were good were the old ones, it would take a long time for you to get to a place where you can compete properly. Whether you know, yeah. Uh, additionally, I think Doctor Scroll made a video on it. I didn't watch the video. I just remember he said something about shaking up the meta. But again, power creep is good because it makes it so that like when new units come out, it shakes up the meta, so you're not stuck playing against the same characters over and over again. Hua Young came out and single-handedly dumpstered Apocalypse Ravi last season. She still destroys her. Uh, but now basically, yeah, Apocalypse Ravi, she's still a very strong unit, but she's kind of like dropped down a little bit because you've got something like Hua Yung to shake up the meta. Now she's a huge uh, selection there. Um, so yeah, like 
power creep only has benefits again if it's within reason and so far it's been within reason so i'm not sure why people complaining so much about it right that's kind of the main thing i wanted to like bring up is that people are kind of just spewing stuff because someone else said it and well power creep is a good demon to to to, to hang up and like you know criticize and make myself look better and get more more views and like uh validate more people's opinions right because people don't actually know what they're talking about like you know what i mean so the point being that power creep isn't necessarily a bad thing just look at the factors that why they're complaining about it and like have a discourse because again youtubers don't are not here to have a discourse with you they don't really care but have a discourse with yourself and have a you know an understanding of like where the game is and where it's going um okay so that's 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 that point the second point we're going to talk about is the idea of nerfs versus buffs i think again I, I said this earlier i think in the video talking about like changing stuff so if they put nerfs into this game the only people who are going to lose are the people who invested into those units right which okay that's going to suck but i can see why they wouldn't right so there's a reason why you don't want to nerf units because for one people invest in a unit and now suddenly it's nerfed right so that's another that's another like you don't want to add because people are already like people are already complaining about power creep making their units irrelevant and then wanting refunds for those molas right now you want to double that with nerfs like i don't understand like i just don't understand like you're already complaining that power creep is making your units irrelevant and you want nerfs on top of that now granted i know i know what they want they want they don't want their units to be irrelevant they just want units to be kind of toned down but we'll talk about that in a little bit but again Keep that in mind because that's what's going to happen when they nerf stuff. They're going to make certain units irrelevant and it's going to be, they're going to come, you're doubling up on the complaints that already exist. Uh, the other part again about nerfs is that let's pretend like this little chandelier here is the line of, of scrimmage or whatever, the line of like power. Above this line is overpowered units, so like Ra A Ravi, uh, Hua Young, and like all these other strong units like uh, Commander Lilius, like they're all up here. Down here are all the other units in the entire game, right? They all kind of suck and they really can't reach this line nerfing all it's going to do is drop this unit below this line and keep all these units up here so unless you hit them all at the same time it's not really worth it and and okay first of all they're not going to hit them all at the same time because that's dumb second of all even if they did hit them all at the same time this line would still exist and everything would just rearrange itself Oop, where am i yeah everything would just rearrange itself to put a new set of units above this line and a bunch of other units below this line all that explanation is basically just to say this whether they nerf exactly the way you want or what you want is irrelevant because that line is imaginary and that line adjusts itself to the game's current balance all the nerfs that you want everything that you want to do they can smilegate can like get on their knees and do every change that every youtuber wants in one night and the next night that line is going to exist and there's going to be another set of units above that line and all kinds of units below that line again right that's all i want to that's the main point i want to stress to people is there's no fixing that line that line is going to be there now forever and it's always been there like it has never gone away okay so now that i've mentioned that not to mention like the fact that there's more of them up here means that there's just more variety right back then it used to be like less i don't know it's hard to like explain but back then it used to be like again we, we used to look at like the golden boys right back then there was like five units and they were in every match if there's 11 units in there in every match isn't that better than the same five that used to be like i don't understand like it helps add variety by adding more units above this line and that's where i agree with their statement of their not their statement but like i agree with their ideas that it's better to buff units than nerf them because nerfing units only brings people below this line and doesn't really change anything because again this line is going to exist no matter what and there's going to be units above this line so how about we start just focusing on getting these units down here above this line to increase the the viability and the like versatility of the meta so like i said that that's my main thing it's like there are only negatives by inc by implementing nerfs right nothing good there's there's only yeah there's only negative effects from nerfing stuff okay the positive effect is and the positive effect is imaginary it's like oh it'll fix the game no it won't fix anything the game will still be equally as unbalanced. So the the idea of nerfs is are nerfs bad? Like I said, we don't. It's not like I think nerfs are bad. I don't really mind them. If 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 Smilegate tomorrow decides to put nerfs in the game, 
that's fine. I mean, we're just I'm just going to keep playing the game and nerfs come and go and we'll see what happens, right? But the fact that we are in the system now, it's fine the way it is. Like, well, it's not fine the way it is necessarily, but the idea is that it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be screwed up. It's screwed up now, and whether they increase nerfs, whether they in introduce nerfs, it's going to be screwed up then, right? So there's really not going to be a change to the game. Is what the main point I want to make is like, so if there's not going to be any change to the game in terms of like how broken it is or how how badly they perceive the game, why introduce nerfs at all? Because again, I don't mean to sound overly vicious or overly vitriolic when I say this, but I mean you know, take it for what you will. I don't mean to necessarily speak negatively of the Smilegate, but I'm going to say this in a hyperbolized kind of like overly dramatic way, uh, to, so you can understand my like the point of view of it, right? But here it is. When Smilegate makes buffs and whatnot, half the time the buffs are useless, right? So you're telling me that this, whatever group, whoever's in charge of buffing and balance patching, you're telling me that like people who barely have the brain power to make proper buffs, because most of the time the buffs come out and the useless unit is still equally as useless, right? Or they're just side graded and it doesn't really add very much. So you're telling me people who barely have the brain power to make buffs decent, right? You want them to start handling nerfs? Like, do you realize how how like dumb that sounds? Like, again, they want they want they want perfection, right? They want everyone they, they think that introducing nerfs is gonna bring these people down to this line when it's absolutely not. Because when they used to introduce nerfs, basically they would just dumpster the unit. Like it went from up here to down here and now it's basically unusable. The only one who arguably was kinda like that was probably Vildred. Um, but uh, even now he's useless. But again, Vildred went from like up here to like right here, or maybe like right here slightly. Um, but again, that's what I'm saying. The point is that people they barely have the resources to make proper buffs to get people from up he, from down here to even close to this line. They sometimes they just go from here to like right here and they fall short. <laughs> so you're telling me people who can't even buff these units to get them up here, you want them to start handling nerfs and expect the nerfs to land them right here. Those nerfs are just going to dump to them down here, and we're still going to have units up here, right? These this line and this stuff isn't going to change with nerfs. Um, so that's kind of what the main point I want to make is like, whatever's going on with Epic Seven, whatever's going on with Smilegate, whatever resources they have dedicated to this and that, they don't, they barely have the resources dedicated to get the buffs through. Now you want to double those resources that that are required to introduce nerfs, and you want them both to be equally as good, right? You want good buffs and you want good nerfs. When we barely have good buffs now, you want them to also introduce good nerfs. Like all we're gonna get is worse buffs because it takes all their resources to get decent buffs. So we're gonna get worse buffs because now the resources are cut in half. And we're gonna get really bad nerfs. So either way, like there's no, like again, what they're asking for a lot of the time is too idealized for the situation we're in. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. Like I said, that, that's kind of, those are kind of my main thoughts. Hopefully I condensed them small enough. This used to be like a 50 minute video or 40 something minute video. Um, but those are my main condensed thoughts of like, Power creep is not inherently bad. People just latch on to power creep as a good villain to like build controversy and build attention off of. The other thing is nerfs, again, nerfs are the same thing. It's just a good villain to like, oh man, as soon as we get nerfs, then I'll be happy. That's all I want. All I want is nerfs. Just just bring nerfs in and I'm good. Just bring nerfs in. Nerfs, that's all we need. It's not going to fix anything. You're still going to hate the, yourself. You're still going to hate the game because it's your mentality approaching the game that you despise, not necessarily the game. It's why you don't stop playing it. It's why the free-to-play players aren't exactly complaining as much, right? Like Astronox isn't really complaining as much. Um, who else? Like uh, uh, Mango is not really a free-to-play player, but like he also like he doesn't really care because he's not, you know, his livelihood isn't staked on Epic Seven being a you know better than it is. He just enjoys the way the game is now. So again, it goes back to the same thing. Just it's your mindset that dictates the quality of the game, not necessarily the game. Um, but like I said, I'm not necessarily here to advocate that, like the people asking for reduction in power creep, I'm not saying that you should stop doing that. I'm, you know, you do your thing, but take a mature, a more mature approach to it. Don't act like a child demanding for something without really knowing why you just are, because it's a thing to demand the same thing with nerfs, have a more mature mindset to nerfs 
recognize both sides and carry on that way. Right now, no one's recognizing any other side other than nerfs need to happen, and that's final, right? And that's not, you know, that's the childish, that's myopic, it's it's self-centered, and it doesn't take into consideration other arguments. So, like I said, those are my main points with this video. It's not to say that you shouldn't ask for nerfs. I mean, you can ask for nerfs, and I think uh, the game would just be as interesting today as it would be without the nerfs, but, you know, that's a different story. Like, nerfs are going to be interesting, but they're harder to handle in something like this just because of how much investment people put into, like, units and stuff like that. Like, you just destroy a lot of builds. Um, so yeah, like I said, there's a lot of negatives to removing power creep the way they want. There's a lot of negatives to increasing power creep. There's a lot of negatives to, um, to introducing nerfs and there's a lot of negatives to keeping the way nerfs are, right? I just want to make sure we all have like a more sophisticated, uh, what's the word? Conversation. Because right now, like I said, it's a lot of echo chambers just spewing out stuff without really taking into consideration both sides. Um, right when you know you could just be happy by being happy like just gotta change your own mindset uh, but yeah so that's it for today um, again this this video is still pretty long and rambly despite um, being significantly shorter than it was before and significantly less uh, tangential um, but yeah hopefully this this helps with the conversation a little bit again I've only got like 30 of you guys here so at least us 30 here are gonna be pretty well like observed of the of the topics but you know Hopefully, um, people grow up out in the real, like in the in the real uh, Epic Seven YouTube space. Is all I'm hoping for.